welcome to Sydney Talks About Witchy Things. Happy October. It's not October right now, but it'll be October soon and it's October for you. So, it's time. Today we're going to be talking about what is... I'm sorry if the lighting is weird. It is early morning. It is 9am, so like mid-morning. And the sun is right there. If you hear weird dog noises, Ed is right there. He's down there. He's in his chair. Um, today we'll be talking about the general basics of witchcraft and paganism. Um, yeah, because that is my life. <laughs> Uh, sorry if I look greasy, I need a shower, I just want to get this filming done while I have the idea in my brain. So, yeah. So, first thing, witchcraft is not evil. <laughs> we do not worship the devil. It is actually, like, completely, completely separate from Christianity. It is just a false belief that witchcraft is evil and that we praise Lucifer and all that. It's it's not real. It's not true. I mean, you can watch The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina all you want. I love that show still, but it's not. It's a completely, absolutely separate thing. Um, witchcraft is a form of paganism in Wicca, which is a religion that practices witchcraft is a pagan religion. That's a lot to think about, and a lot all at once. Sorry if I'm turning. I am tired. <laughs> um, so paganism, in its, I guess, definition, is like alternative culture and religion, if that makes sense. It's not what... You know, you can say that, oh, I'm Christian, I'm Catholic, I'm Jewish, you know, all of those, like, standard, that, like, people, when they think about religion, they have, like, certain, like, religions that they, like, like, list off. And then there's pagan ones, which are more, um, more, like, environmental, more natural, more in tune with the earth, more, um, spiritual. And all those kind of things, while well, like modern and known religions are more um, praiseworthy and um, restrictive, I guess. Um, yeah, there are different forms of pagan religions. I am not an expert on all of them. There are many, 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 many different forms of pagan religions. I literally probably don't even know like half of them or at least like five like don't ask me about any kinds of religions <laughs> I'm not somebody who knows a lot about religion so I don't follow any specific religion because paganism is a umbrella term as I just said um, but um, there are belief systems in that paganism that you can have without having a religion, which I know that sounds weird to some people, but say, hey, yeah, I'm atheist, but then you have, like, certain things that can be put into the category of having a religion, but you don't have a set religion. Do you understand? It's kind of like that. So for me, it's kind of in my belief systems that is encompassed by paganism um, in which I practice witchcraft. Now Wicca is a pagan religion. Wicca is a religion. They have god and goddesses, they have rules, um, but it's not like as restrictive as again most known religions are, if that makes sense. And I'm not saying that I mean, like, I'm trying to explain it, but all I can think about is popular, but that doesn't make any sense. But, like, are you getting my point? <laughs> like, popular religions? Not, like, pagan religions, but other religions, they have- not that they're, like, restrictive or bad in any way, just paganism and Wicca are a bit more fluid and loose, I guess. 
Um, but Wicca is a religion. I don't know everything about it because I'm not Wiccan. Um, so, um, Wicca is a pagan religion that you practice witchcraft in and you have a whole set of what the religion is. I'm not going to be talking about it because I literally have like, uh, like, a th like, tiny bit of the information that you would get from somebody who's actually Wiccan. If you want to go to a YouTuber who is actually Wiccan and actually know shit about it, Harmony Nice, yes, she's great, I watch her. She actually is the one that really introduced me to witchcraft and what paganism is and that kind of stuff. Um, so what really happens with paganism is that you don't really just, you're a pagan now, you know? It's like you go to church and then you suddenly have an awakening that God is real, you know? It's not like that. The majority of people who are pagan got into paganism, molded it with their own set of beliefs. So it is very personal, very custom, very tailored to the person. It is really, in a sense, what you believe yourself and not what a religion or what a belief system really says. Okay, but there is kind of this like broad term across paganism that it's very natural, very environmental, very in tune with nature, um, but there are different varieties, different levels, different everything with paganism. Everybody is different. Everything is different depending on what culture you're from, what culture you're focused on, what you practice. Yeah, not every pagan person practices witchcraft. Witchcraft is a pagan practice but there are different kinds of pagans. That's just how things work, I guess. Yeah, so for me, with my belief system is that I grew up not in a religious household, but um, every summer we would go to vacation Bible school, which is just like a morning thing that you go to for like two weeks in the summer. Um, my mom wasn't really religious, but she sent us there because she wanted alone time at the house and wanted us to, like, go do something during the summer. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I, as a child, so from, like, ages, like, four to maybe about nine, I would say that I was Christian. Loosely. We weren't a religious household. We didn't go to church. We didn't really practice anything at home. It was basically just for two weeks during the summer when we went to vacation bio school. Then I was Christian. Makes sense, I guess. Um, but around age 10, um, my siblings and I, as like a, like a group, kind of decided, we're not really into this. We don't really believe any of this stuff, you know, it's kind of when we start getting our own autonomy and start like actually like, who am I in that feeling? That's what we kind of decided that we were like, meh. So we just were like, okay, we just have ourselves and what we personally believe in. And that's where paganism comes in. I would say that for the majority of my childhood into my teenagehood as I am now, I would be classified as pagan because of my beliefs, but it didn't really start, hi. I didn't really start getting into like paganism up until about a year ago, maybe about a year and a half. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? What can I? You got up stretched and now you're going back into your chair. You want to come here? He's coming to say hi. My new guy. Hey, look. What's that? What's this? Yeah, what's this? What is it? What is that? What's that? What's that, buddy? Oh, there are blackberries over there. Do you smell the candles? So many sniffs. Go 
back in your chair. Yeah. You had a dog intermission. Are you good now? Why are you looking at me like that? You're looking at me weird. Why are you shaking? Um, so yeah, you kind of don't, you don't convert any of your beliefs into paganism. It's just you take what you already believe in and what you think is what's going on with the universe and life and the world and you take that and you basically mold it yourself. That is paganism. You don't have to follow anything if you don't want to. It's very versatile. Again, it's very tailored, very custom. Honestly, it's like, to me, one of the <laughs> best things, but if you guys can have a completely different mindset, I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to educate you all and tell you what the shit is about about paganism. That is what I'm here for. That is this month, this is October, okay? My family, we weren't religious, but we're spiritual, if that makes any sense. Um, my grandmother, she loved to garden, loved to grow herbs, make oils, make natural healing. Definitely, if she knew what, um, uh, what we would call a green witch or a, probably a green witch because she used a lot of herbs in her plants. She loved plants. <laughs> a lot of her herbs in her plants in her gardens for natural remedies. And that is part of green witchery, um, which is a subcategory of witchcraft, which I'm going to get on to. But that she is kind of like what kind of kicked started the spirituality in our family. Um, she wasn't religious herself, I would say, but she did keep her Bible with her. So it was kind of like she had her naturalism and then she had the religion that she grew up with and still felt kind of some attachment to, which is completely okay. You guys can be any religion and still practice witchcraft. It doesn't matter. You don't have to pick anything. You can pick and like all of it if you want to if you want to believe in many multiple things from any different cultures and folklores and religions go for it nobody's going to stop you nobody's going to judge you um but yeah my grandmother she still had the connection to her christianity from her childhood and then she had the very paganism naturalist that she had through pretty much her entire adult life <laughs> um so that really got passed down onto um, my mother and my aunts and my uncles and that side of the family where, yes, they did go to church every Sunday, um, but what was really taught was the very much spiritual side, this belief that there is something out there, if that makes any sense. It might not be exactly God. It might not be anything that you would think, but there's some energy, let's say. That's how I see it, is I see it as there's this energy. So with me, I do a lot of, I'm talking to the universe, I'm, ask, I'm asking the universe for this. But that is me personally. Um, I just believe that there's something. I believe that um, there is something after death. What it is, I don't know, but I think that our souls, which is ourselves, not our physical body, but our souls, do release into the world and do stick around. So, for layman's terms, I believe in ghosts. I, I don't see them as a bad thing or something that's there to haunt you or be evil. I can definitely think that some souls and spirits do have malevolent tendencies and can be there to harm you, but not every single one. Um, there could be just an energy or a presence. For example, I'm in the office, which used to be my mother's office, and there is so much of her energy here, and I'm gonna not talk about it a lot because I'm gonna start crying. I'm already starting to cry now. Um, there's so much of her energy here, and I think it's because I have a lot of her Sorry, I don't want to cry. I have a lot of her stuff in here. I have some of her books, I have some of her collectibles, a lot of her craft supplies, 
I've kind of inherited a lot of her stuff that was basically in her office. Um, so I have a lot of that energy, her energy in here. There's certain things that when I do something, I can just feel her there, you know? It's a very weird experience and you won't... I'm trying not to cry. Um, <laughs> you won't understand it until it happens to you. It is... Um, I'm really trying not to cry here. I am so sorry. I'm talking about my mother and every time I talk about her, I always start crying. <laughs> I'm at that point. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, there are just certain things that happen when I do them or certain things that happen and actions that happen that um, I just feel her. I'm really trying not to cry. This wasn't the plan for this video. Um, I can feel her presence there. I can feel um, some sort of guidance. And um, so most spirits that I feel are my mother, which was recent. Um, and sorry, oh my god. I literally was like, okay, I'm gonna talk about this, and I wasn't even, like, upset earlier, and I'm not really upset now, it's just, like... <sighs> um, and my grandmother is the other, um, kind of force and energy that I feel. I feel a lot of that when I practice my work, because I have a lot of her... Again, I inherited a lot of things. I have a few, um word stones that I use if I want to have a specific energy. I have those. I have some jewelry from hers that I work with. Um, yeah. So there's that. You can definitely feel energies. I know that a lot of you guys who don't believe in um, spirits and ghosts would completely not understand what I'm talking about. Um, but there's just something about being in a room and doing something that reminds you of that person and just like feeling that they're there. It's, it's a really odd feeling and it doesn't even happen with just my grandmother or my mother. If you guys don't know, I have my own personal ghost. His name is, uh, Victor. Um, he just follows me around. Um, he doesn't really do much. He just wants a friend. That's it. He's a very, um, friendly, just calming, just energy that's there. His name is Victor. He's really just looking for a friend. And that's it. That's, I usually feel him, my mother, and my grandmother. And then recently, I've been feeling just this random, really overbearing force. Not like bad, but just really powerful, and I don't know what it's from. <laughs> um, so I don't know what I brought into this room that it, is it was attached to. It could be a number of things, honestly. Um, yeah. So I just got on a ramble about spirits, I'm sorry. Um, but that is part of my belief system, is that I do believe that there is something after death um, I do think that our souls and our spirits and our inner self do go through a process to get to that final stage of the life after death. And then there's also the transitional period where you're around your loved ones and you're kind of guiding them into the future of what they need to do. Does that make sense? I know that um, a lot of religions and other people have that accompanied with them. Which, I think it's one of the more um, popular and well-known beliefs that people just kind of carry out out of paganism. Um, but yeah, that's what I personally believe in. I believe that our bodies and our souls are completely different. Um, I think there is your inner self and then there is your how you present um, in your human form. I believe that souls can basically there's one soul that does a whole bunch of different lifetimes so whether that is um 
you come from your past life into this new body. You live, you die, you have the traditional period of being around your other loved ones, and then after that you have that turn you have the life after death, and then your soul gets recycled into the next pattern. That is what I kind of believe in in the reincarnation, which is um again something that is in actually a lot of different religions, a lot of different cultures, a lot of people believe that people get new reincarnated and that there's like one soul for many lives, which I think is why there's just, there's this, you know, there's people that you just feel like just have lived through lots, even like little kids. I know like nine year olds that like you talk to them and you would think that they're like full grown adults because of how smart they are and how intellectual and how like just really freaking smart. Um, and you're just kind of amazed that like you're eight years old, you have eight years on this planet, and yet you know so much. It doesn't make any sense, but if you think about the past lives and what they've learned and what they've gone through, then it makes sense. And then you start to have that um, kind of um, knowledge of that you, it's kind of like a, a cushion for the existential crisis of death, if that makes sense. Um, it's that there is evidence of it. Again, it's a belief. It's a belief system. You don't have to believe in anything. You can believe in whatever you want. That's just me. That's what I believe in. I believe that there are many and multiple energies in the world. I believe that nature and the elements and different spaces of the world and even different rooms have different energies for what is attached to it for example i'm just gonna grab something um i literally just have a bunch of art supplies i don't know oh okay i have something this is a card wow it's the joker card i didn't even look well um, talk about fate. <laughs> um, this is a very old card. I'm painting on them to make such a cards, but that'll be a totally- Sorry if the angle's different. I ran out of storage on my phone, so I had to quickly transfer files to my computer. Anyways, this is a, um, old card from a deck of cards that I got at, I think it was an antique show or something like that. Um, yeah, so I, you know, this could have its own personal energy, its own personal history. This entire deck of cards could have so many energies and spirits and people attached to it because of the people that it belonged to in the past. Like, you can kind of tell that it's a older card by how it looks, how it's aged, the, um, actual, here, I'll show you. The box that the deck comes in looks like that. So it's like, you know, it's a little old. It's a little dated. It's a little, um, what you would call kind of vintage chic. Um, but it could have its own attachments to it that comes from the owners that previously had it. Um, could be anything, really, because it could be in a different bunch of people's hands, different, but the situations that it was in, you know, honestly, it was probably just a whole bunch of grandmas, <laughs> to be honest. Like, do you see this? Okay, sorry, alarm went off on my phone, so there's so many interruptions, but, like, who else other than me would have this, to be honest? You know, probably a bunch of grandmas. Maybe some antique people. But again, you don't know what kind of energies are attached to it. So I have many thrifted items, many inherited items in here came from a whole bunch of different situations. What energies are attached to them? I don't know. Could be anything. So yeah, that's kind of 
how I believe that energies work, that it's connected through what basically lives the objects have gone through. Like, who have they been touched by? Who has held them? Who has come across them? Yeah, so that's kind of what I think of energies. I think that everything has an energy. I think that everything has some kind of soul or spirit, for example. My lovely golden pothos here in this upcycled kombucha bottle. Um, this is my plant. It came from a bigger plant, but it is now grown into its own plant. It is its own self, but I believe that it has its own soul, its own life, its own purpose, its own personality. I know that a lot of people are going to be like, it's a plant, it can't have a personality. It can. Some plants, extremely divish, like, not even difficult plants, as in, like, the plant is difficult. Like, some plants are just super, super drama queens. Like, they're insane. Like, you cannot tell me that plants do not have a personality. Like, they totally do. They have their own soul. I am telling you. They have their own way of thinking. Um, you know, I think that anything has a soul, anything and everything. I think that anything that has been passed around and had many lives. Um, a lot of things that are kind of, um, store-bought, as in, like, they're new, it's kind of, for say, this paint tube. It's a paint tube. I bought it out of Michael's. It was probably manufactured, touched by many people, but it doesn't exactly have a soul attached to it, if that makes any sense, because it's a paint tube. Which, you know, which I just said that, like, a rock can have a personality. Which it can, but that's because it's more of or an, an organic thing. Meanwhile, this is kind of a paint tube, but it has its purpose, it has kind of its own energy for like it's the creative energy, but it doesn't really have a soul. Make sense? Kind of. Again, this is everything that I just believe in. You can believe in anything else you want to, this is just me. Um, what's another of one that's kind of, I'm looking for something that's kind of been passed down, more of a kind of organic, not even organic, because you can have man-made stuff that has its own personality as well. Um, ooh. nice guy. This is, I believe, a planter pot shaped like a skull. Of course, I would be the one that would find it at a thrift store and buy it because it's a skull. Come on. How can I not? Um, I have... This desperately wants a plant inside of it. I have not been able to find a plant pot that can fit inside of here because I don't want to put the plant directly into the skull. I want to have a plant pot in there, but I have not found a plant pot that fits inside of it, and I'm very upset because it desperately, desperately wants a plant inside of it, because right now it has some lavender essential oils, which is very low, and some leftover badges from when I had a camp, and some other things. But it wants a plant inside of it, but it doesn't have one yet because I haven't found the right one. So, that's kind of two examples of kind of how different energies, different needs work for certain objects. Um, you can literally pick any object and like, you can feel its energy, feel what it needs to do, feel what it wants to do. For example, I didn't have a candle in this candle holder for a pretty long time. It finally has a candle in it. It's happy, because it wanted a candle in it. I just needed the right time and circumstance and the right candle to put a candle in it. And now it's happy. And it's melted. It has these nice, nice drips. I just broke a drip. I'm so sorry. It desperately wanted a candle. Um, it, you know, different things have 
different auras, different energies. That's what I basically believe in. I know that I keep repeating myself, but I just want to say that everything is really for you. Everything is up to you. You can believe in whatever the fuck you want to. I don't care. Nobody has to care because it's you, it's your own personal life, it's your own personal journey and path. You do you, okay? You believe in what you want to, and my personal belief is that if you're not hurting yourself or other people, then why the fuck should anybody else care? Um, that is kind of how I see my paganism in beliefs. Um, that is kind of just a rundown of what paganism is to me and what my belief system is. Um, now to get on to the next part of the video because this is also an intro to witchcraft. Which, again, witchcraft is a practice in paganism and Wicca, which is a pagan religion, has witchcraft as a practice in that Wicca religion. You do not have to be Wiccan to do witchcraft. <laughs> and you do not have to be pagan to do witchcraft. You don't need any kind of religion to do witchcraft. It is a practice, it is a personal journey, it is a path. It is not set in stone. Okay, that is a constant theme throughout this entire video is that nothing is set in stone and do whatever you want. <laughs> um, so witchcraft. What is witchcraft? Witchcraft is the manipulation and manifestation of energy and power to make things happen. That is witchcraft. And I know that you're probably like, oh, are you gonna like levitate a paint bottle? No, that's not how it works. A lot of stuff in movies where it's like, um, you know, trying to pick something up and unlocking a door with just being like, unlock. That's not how that works. That's not how the energy and spiritual aspect of witchcraft kind of works together. Um, it's a lot of steps, it's a lot of process, a lot of um, figuring out what works for you and what works the best for you. It is your own personal path and your own personal journey. There are many, many, many different types of witchcraft and witches. There are kind of like labels as to when you get into witchcraft is like eclectic witch and green witch, kitchen witch, cottage witch, um, fire witch, fairy witch, dragon witch, demon witch, um, anything, crystal witch which is a form of green witchcraft and cottage witch is kind of a form of green witchcraft as well. As I was saying, there are different paths that you could take, and that's essentially what those labels are. Is there kind of a guidance term for what path you choose to take? For example, Green Witch. A Green Witch is somebody who follows a path of very natural, very organic, very environmental, working with plants and herbs and the environment in a very naturalist, organic kind of way. It is a path that you follow that encompasses everything to do with the earth and mother nature and the environment, if that makes sense. That is a specific path that you can take in witchcraft. Um, you don't have to. There are, again, many different paths and you don't even have to take one path. You don't have to have a label. You can basically just say, I want to do many different things, which is kind of what I do, is I, yes, work with plants, I work with the earth, I also work with candles, I work with crystals, I work with food, I work with tarot cards, which is a form of divination, um, spirit work, again, you can communicate with the dead and spirits, I know that that is another topic of so many videos on YouTube of people faking it and not faking it, people thinking that they're faking it, and that kind of work. Um, you can work with any different types of magic that you want to, um, if you want. You can also follow a path of a kitchen witch, which means that you um, work with 
in the kitchen. So then you do cooking and baking and a lot of potions for a lot of teas and coffee and kind of in anything that is food related, that's kind of what encompasses a kitchen witch. And then um, it kind of like kitchen witch and green witch for me kind of have like a crossover which I call an herb witch because it's more people that work with um, like natural remedies with herbs and plants but then they also use it for like food as well um, so that's a crossover um, and then there's people that work with the fae so a fairy witch or a fae witch I know that again that is another whole other story of do our fairies real and we're just suggesting things again I don't have to say that you may believe in anything it is just some uh, people's beliefs. That is what I'm saying. I'm not passing any judgment. I'm not saying anything at all. Is that some people believe, myself included, that the Fae do exist. It is actually a big part of Scandinavian culture that you do not mess with fairies. <laughs> um, if you see a fairy circle, walk away. Just do it. Don't get into that don't do anything, but there are people who specifically do work with fairies and the fae and it's very tricky work because the fae are very tricky. They like to trick people, like to get into deals where people aren't necessarily getting what they think they're doing, that kind of stuff. It is very tricky business. And then there's people who specifically just work with spirits and, community and communicating with the dead and necro necromancy. Um, you can follow any kind of path. There are so many paths to take. It is, again, all catered to you and what you want to do in anything and everything. It's just you and personally you and what you want to do. It is so versatile and so open and so just like you're like paganism and witchcraft is like a very open-faced book that you can write your own story into it is you just start and you go and it's all over and you can do whatever the hell you want at whatever times you, can, you like there's you can never do something your path is not wrong, is what I'm trying to say. Your path goes all over the place, just like life, because it's a journey. It's not a single straight shot of, I'm doing this and then it's going to continue. You know, you're going to change, you're going to evolve, you're going to develop into the witch that you want to be and what your fate and destiny has basically set out for you. Another thing that I'm going to say is you do not have to be female to be a witch. You don't have to be female to be a pagan. Which is a non-gender non-gendered term. Same with Wiccan or Pagan. It is non-gendered. You can be who the fuck you are. That's it. I know that a lot of people when they think witch, they think woman, but it is so again, so versatile, so open, so custom, so tailored. It is Whoever wants to and do whatever you want. Yeah, it is so open and so many paths, so many ways, and I probably did not do justice of talking about it. It is probably been maybe about 45 minutes of me talking, so this is gonna be a long video, but it I just wanted to get the basics down of what it is. There are so many different levels of magic in witchcraft and paganism that that's why I'm doing an entire month for it. It is, again, there's so much to learn, so much information that I probably am not even going to cover half of it. I totally can't cover half of it. Um, yeah, so this is the first video in the entire month dedicated to paganism and witchcraft. Um, uh, tomorrow, so on the Sunday, we are doing kind of an introduction to other different like forms of witchcraft. So we are going to be talking about tarot cards. Um, yeah, 
which is a form of divination, aka um, future telling, or but that's kind of a loose term of what tarot cards actually do. But I will tell you more information about that tomorrow, because it's gonna be Sunday tomorrow at 5 p.m. EST. So this has been your intro to paganism and witchcraft. Thank you.